Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the food experience. Today's experience, I got something really special for you. I've been wanting this for a long time now, well, since it came out, not that long ago. Anyhow, I got the new Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven Grill Edition. I'm just going to start off saying I love this thing. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the new Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven Grill Edition. And here we go. Here's a look at the front of the box for the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven Grill. Left side of the box, right side of the box. When you open the box, you'll get a packet. And inside of the packet, you'll get two quick start guides, one in English, one in Spanish. Then you'll get the user manual a recipe book by Chef Jamie Gwen, who I actually have met before, and you'll get a registration card and warranty card. You will get one air fryer basket, a basket removal tool in addition to a rotisserie removal tool, one wire rack, one grill grate, a bake pan that doubles as a drip pan, a drip groove, a rotisserie spit and two rotisserie forks, one dehydrator tray, and one charcoal filter. I've already removed this from the little package it came in. It also has a piece of styrofoam that comes inside of it. I just removed the styrofoam and I'll show you how to install this. Lastly, you will get one crumb tray and it looks like it's slightly been redesigned. I could tell by these little bumps right here that go across horizontally. Last but not least, the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven Grill Edition. Let's do a quick look around the device. So on the front, you got this caloric symbol. You have a bunch of functions, and you'll see them when I plug it in. And there are a couple virtual buttons right here in addition to a selector dial. Then you have two French doors. They open at the same time. And they seem to stay open pretty good. Like you can see me wiggle this and they're not just closing. You got to actually use a little bit of force to close them. Not much though. I mean, it really doesn't take much. But they're not going to close on you. At least they haven't for me. Inside of the oven, you're going to have four heating elements on the bottom. In addition to a temperature probe that sticks out. The grill grate goes on top of the temperature probe and that way it's able to sense the temperature. On the left side there is a little hook right there for the rotisserie rod to sit in. On the right hand side the rotisserie rod goes into this little motorized mount and I'll demonstrate how to do that. Looking inside at the top you'll have two heating elements in addition to a rather large fan. Also to note on the top and the sides and the back there is plenty of ventilation, but you need to make sure that you have four inches of clearance on the sides, top, and back. So you can see from looking at one of the sides, there is plenty of ventilation. And like I said, give it at least four inches of room so it could properly breathe. Here's a look at the back of the device. Again, more ventilation. You'll also have this exhaust area right here. The air from inside comes out here while it's cooking, and this is where the charcoal filter mounts. You'll see there's one mount on this side, one on this side. It is super easy to install the charcoal filter. Just go ahead and kind of latch it in on one side, and then the other, and then push down. Just like that, and it's installed. At the bottom, you're going to have a sticker right here with manufacturing information. You will also have these two standoffs, and that's used so you cannot put it too close to a wall. But even then, these standoffs are not long enough. You want to go at least twice the amount of distance as these standoffs away from a wall. Here's a look at the power cord that comes with it. It's really not the longest, okay? But you want to try to put this directly into an outlet. If you're going to use an extension cord, make sure it's a heavy duty extension cord capable of 15 amps. Next thing to do is plug it in. Here we go. It's going to make a single chime. You'll see caloric right here. You'll see your start stop button illuminate. To get to the other functions, press the start stop button. There is all the functions that the device supports and on the left side here you're going to have time and on the right side you're going to have temperature. It may look like these are flickering, they actually are not. What it is is a refresh rate between the camera and the LED lights. It's just how it is when you try to take video of such things with some cameras. Over here you have the light button, press it once, the interior light will come on, press it again, it'll turn off. To get to the air fry functions, just press air fry and you'll notice that these functions appear. 
If you press oven, these are the functions for oven. So if we go to air fry, you're going to notice there's air fry chicken, warm ribs, shrimp, steak, wings, bacon, fish, corn, fries, dehydrate, defrost, and veggies. If you notice air fry is blinking, to change it to a different selection, use the selector dial and it's going to go through the different choices. And if you notice, each one has a preset time and temperature. To adjust the time, press the selector dial in and it's going to go over to the time position. You can use the dial to go up or down. It's going to go one minute at a time and you could go all the way up and it's going to stop at 9 hours and 59 minutes and that's really cool because I believe with the previous one we were limited to 2 hours on air fry. I could be wrong though. If you want to change the temperature press the selector dial in. It's going to go to 450 and you could certainly decrease it or increase it and it goes 5 degrees at a time. Once you're ready to start go ahead and press start stop and it's going to start the process and you'll notice air fry is blinking. That's because the oven is preheating. Once it's done preheating, air fry will turn solid. If you want to stop the process early, just press start stop. While it's displaying off, you'll notice the fan continues to go. You can turn it off if you like by holding start stop for a couple seconds like this. And it's going to turn off. Press start stop again and goes back on. So we got to go to the oven mode. You got bake, broil, pastry, pizza, proof, roast, toast, and grill. You'll notice proof defaults to 100 degrees. You could actually lessen it and go to 80 and you could go all the way up to 140. So under bake mode, if we go to the temperature selection, it's going to go all the way down to 200 degrees. And on the higher end, it's going to go up to 450. Now, it looks like broil also goes to 500. I believe the last one only went to 450. I could be wrong, though. Only two of the bottom heating elements are active. Under grill, all four of them are active. I also want to mention, no matter what function you're in, no matter whether it's the air fry modes or oven modes, I'll go ahead and start one real quick. We'll go to air fry and start it. When you do, you'll notice this rotisserie light appear. When you press it, it's going to start the rotisserie. Without that, the rotisserie is not going to turn. Press it again, and it will not turn. And you can also tell because there's these lights right here. Pay attention right here when I press it. You'll notice the rotisserie light appear. Press it again, and it disappears. And another thing to note, if you're going to air fry and you start a function, you'll notice a little fan symbol appear. And if I go over to oven and start that, you won't see the fan symbol because there is no air or circulation. It is not a convection oven at that point. It is just a regular oven. Let's go to oven, go to grill, default 500 degrees, 13 minutes. Of course, you could change that. And if I start that up, you're going to notice the temperature start counting. And that is the temperature probe that's in the oven. Your grill grate normally goes over that probe and you'll know when it's up to temperature because this will reach whatever the desired temperature is. I think that's really cool. Now the first thing they recommend in the book is doing a burn-in test to get rid of manufacturing oils. Um, it says to use air fry and to use steak. You know, I'm not sure about that with this model, to be honest. Uh, because if you do that, only the top heating elements are going to turn on, not the bottom ones. So I think in this case, I'm going to go to oven. I'm going to go to grill, press the selector dial, and I'm going to increase it to 20 minutes. Leave it at 500 degrees and start the cycle. Now, if you notice, the fan is on. Okay, so it is activating the air fryer fan. So I'm going to let that run and do the burn-in for 20 minutes. Also, while the burn-in is completing, is a perfect time for you to wash all of the accessories. Just use soap and water. Don't use anything abrasive. And make sure to clean everything to get rid of any manufacturing oils or anything else. The burn-in process for the grill is complete. I'm going to press and hold start stop. Go ahead and press it again. I'm going to go ahead and press air fry and I'm going to navigate over to steak. I don't think I even need to go 20 minutes. We're just going to go with the 13. 
at 500 degrees. That should be sufficient. I already did 20 minutes under the grill mode. All right, this process is now complete. Also, another thing to note, these touch sensitive buttons could be a little bit picky. Like when I press them, see it took two presses for that to go. It may not always go, but what I find always usually works is my thumb. If I hit it with my thumb like that, it works every time. I'll press and hold start stop, it should turn off. There we go. As I was going over the accessories, I mentioned you get a rotisserie spit and two forks. And it's really simple to use. Basically, the rounded end right here, you just spear through whatever meat you're cooking. Now, if you notice, each of the forks has a thumb screw. So you just loosen the thumb screw. And they really have it all the way in. So you got to take it almost all the way out, but don't go too far, folks. That should be fine. Then you just take one of the forks and slip it over the rotisserie rod. It'll go through both of those square little parts, just like that. These forks should already be going into the meat that you're going to be cooking. And then you just take the other one and put it through as well. And once you have the meat secured, go ahead and tighten this thumb screw. So at this point, the meat that you're going to be cooking is going to be right in the middle between these forks. And you want to make sure these forks are speared into the meat so that it's going to hold it in place. You want to take the rounded end and make sure it's facing to the right. And you want to slip it right inside of the hole there. And then drop the other side down just like that. Let me see if I could demonstrate it turning. So I'll go ahead and press the rotisserie. I'll go ahead and turn on the interior light. And you can indeed see that it is turning. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that process. Once the meat is completed, you go ahead and use this removal tool. If you notice, the rod has notches on both sides. So the ends of this removal tool that bend up, put right underneath and pull right out just like that. When you want to cook meat on the grill grate, if you notice the grate, it has places on the bottom. That's where the heating elements are going to go into. It's going to sit right on top of the elements. And also on the side, this is where the probe is going to fit into. So basically just go ahead and put it in. Make sure it's all the way back. Let it drop down and it will lock into place. It's not going to go anywhere. You only need to have that in place when you are grilling stuff. To remove it, just go ahead and lift it up and out. Also, you always want to operate the Max with a crumb tray installed, and it always goes right below the heating elements, just like that. If you're going to use the wire rack, you could just slide it into any one of the positions. You see how that is, right? It'll fit in any one of them that are available. And you could go ahead and put a pan or a pot on top of here. Um, you could put pizza right on top of here. Really anything that's not going to slip below those grates, you could cook on top of here. Additionally, if you cook something on the wire rack and whatever you're cooking might drip down, you want to protect the heating elements. If you're going to cook something that drips, just make sure to have the bake pan that doubles as a drip pan to the next level lower than the wire rack. Similarly, you could use the air fryer basket in any one of the positions available and again if something is going to drip just make sure to put the drip pan below it at some level below it it doesn't have to be right on it below it but it should be below it to catch the drippings on the doors there's recommended positions for things so at the very top you got dehydrate next down you got broil fast air fry and steak then air fry then bake two which says defrost pizza roast toast and warm and then bake one proof and below that is going to be grill as far as the drip groove is concerned um, it actually comes pre-installed and there's some tape holding it in but you need to remove this each and every time you cook anything that has any amount of grease that drips it will catch all the grease or so they say it will and to install it back in you just go underneath you're going to notice there's these lips right here and it just slides right in just like that 
and it does stick out like you don't need to lift the oven up it does slip out I just wanted to demonstrate how it's done. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That was a look at the new Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven Grill Edition. I really love this thing. I've already put it to the test and cooked a bunch of different items, which I will release on a video next weekend. I still have some more things I'd like to test it with first. So let's go over the pros and the cons, right? Um, okay, the soft touch buttons. They really work quite well once you get the hang of them. One thing I've noticed, when I go to push them with my fingertip, they don't always respond. So what I've done and figured out is to use my thumb. I just set my thumb right across it, crossways, and it always gets it every time. So really that's the only con I could think of regarding the functionality. I can't really find anything else wrong. It definitely does what it's supposed to do. Now one thing I'd like to see changed, caloric, if you're listening, Take notice, what I'd like to see is the air fry and oven functions handle the full spectrum of temperatures and times. I know you have all those little presets. The only ones I really use are going to be air fry, bake, grill, dehydrate, and proof. I really don't feel like I need to use the other ones. The other opinion is with the doors, okay? We know that when the doors open up, people think they could automatically close on you. I've heard of Quite a few people mention that, that the doors close on them and they burn their hands. I really haven't had that happen per se. Um, I could even like hit the doors like this and they don't really close. I gotta use a little more pressure than that to have them close. It could be that not everyone is opening them all the way. Like if you don't open them all the way, then they're gonna wanna close on you. I could totally see that happening, but it's not happened to me. But caloric, if you could find a way to have some kind of a door lock so that once they're open, maybe it clicks into place a little bit better and takes a little bit more pressure to release them and close again. That's the only other thing I could think of. Like I said, even though it hasn't happened to me, that's something I think that everyone would enjoy, you know? All right, let's go over the pros. They greatly outweigh the cons. I think it's a great looking device. I love the French doors. I totally love the redesign that they have done. I love this black panel across the front, the lighted caloric. I think it looks great. And not only that, they got rid of those buttons with the text that would sometimes rub off for people. You just have the selector dial and then soft touch buttons. I dig it. I really like it that way. I also like the large capacity. You could fit quite a bit in there. I see people cooking different things on different levels at the same time. I don't normally do that because it's really hard to find items that are going to pair up together that cook at the same temperature and behave properly together. But I like that it's got such a big cavity inside there. Not only that, it's going to be great for wanting to cook things like a big turkey, um, maybe up to a 12 pound turkey, I'm thinking. Uh, the rotisserie is there. Um, even though you can only cook a bird that's like maybe five or six pounds at the most, and that's only if you tie it and truss it really tight together. I still haven't tried that, but I've seen a bunch of other people do it. And as I mentioned about the soft touch buttons being one of the cons, I actually really enjoy them. For me, it's super easy. You just wake it up with the dial, press the start stop button, press air fry, press start, bam! It works for me every time. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, hold down the button, and it goes off. Like I said, for me, they are very responsive, but I use my thumb you know, sideways like that. I don't ever press them. I tried doing that and it just wasn't as responsive. The grill grate. Don't even get me started with that grill grate. I love that thing. I've already cooked a couple steaks on it. It puts those perfect grill marks. I will say using the grill grate, it does take a little bit longer to cook your steak as opposed to the original Max Oven where it would have you cook the steak up high near the heating elements. But honestly, I think it's better off this way, and I can't wait to try it with some better quality cuts. I've already filmed steak as part of one of the demonstration videos that I'm going to release next weekend, but it was just a sirloin center cut steak. Like I said, I want to try some other cuts, but so far, totally loving it. The charcoal filter in the back. I don't really even know if it's necessary, to be honest. Um, they say it's to get rid of smoke and also odors, but most of the time, never get any smoke buildup in there. And as far as odors go, I mean, yeah, it has that exhaust out the back. The original one had it as well, 
but I never notice any odors that are like lingering for long amounts of time. But I guess it's good that they have that it is an upgrade. So thumbs up on that. Also, I like that they added time to the functions. I believe the original Max only went to two hours on air fry. And I think on this one, I tried it and it was nine hours and 59 minutes. That's awesome. Even though you would not probably air fry something that long, but there are going to be times when you want to cook something at a lower temperature for a long time and it's awesome that they did that. In addition and combination with that, the dehydrator. I really like that they made it handle up to 200 degrees now. I believe with the last version it was only 155, which really wasn't enough to do bacon jerky properly. Uh, bacon jerky normally requires somewhere between 190 and 200 degrees from what I'm reading. Also, the beep sounds, they're gone. They replaced it with a chime sound, okay? It is much more pleasing to my ears. The other one like beep, 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 and now it's all bling, bling. It's just a lot softer. It's not as loud, and it's certainly a lot more pleasant than that annoying beep in the original Mac. So yeah, thumbs up on that change. I believe it cooks your food evenly. So far, I've tried steak, bacon, frozen pizza, and a nine inch cake. I have some more things to try, which is why I'm waiting till next weekend to do my food demonstration video for this. But I've already been filming all of the ones that I mentioned and everything has come out so perfect. Totally loving this thing. I will make another video with temperature checks on it. That way I can make sure it's going to the right temperature that you have set. I'll use an in-oven probe and test it at the front compared to the back to see what the difference is. So look out for that on another video real soon. The interior light. I don't know. To me, it seems a little bit brighter than the last one. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, my old Max is kind of a little bit grimy, so the light is kind of dimmed through time. But it seems to me it's like really bright. I love the French doors, as I mentioned. You can easily see the food that's cooking inside. I love all the different rack positions. You got six different positions that you could cook food in. Um, you know, the grill one you're only going to use for certain items. The dehydrator is really designed for the dehydrator um, tray to go in. But the other ones all serve their time and purpose for sure. As I mentioned, I was talking about the dehydrator. I love that they have that function. And it appears from reading in the manual, the dehydrator tray that they give you goes in the dehydrator position, but not with any food on it. What I was reading in the manual is it says you put the dehydrator tray in the dehydrator slot and whatever food you are dehydrating, you put the next slot lower than the dehydrate position. That's interesting. I'm definitely going to have to give that a try. Maybe I read it wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what I read. But I'm going to check it out, and I will bring it to you guys real soon. I also like the proofing feature. I can't tell you how many times I have made dough that needs to rise, and um, my house doesn't really have much heating, and right now it's the cold months. Winter is here, you know. Well, it's about to be here. Anyhow, it certainly is cold. I woke up, it was like 33 degrees this morning. I was like so cold. As you can see, I still have a hoodie on, even though it's like the middle of the day. It's still about 50 degrees inside my place right now. So I really like the proof feature. You could go to like 100 degrees and go ahead and put your dough in there at the proof level and it works amazing. I make dough all the time and it rises up perfectly. In less than an hour, the dough will double its size, and I think that's really efficient. Also, the new recipe book. I really like the new recipe book. It has a lot more recipes in there, and not only that, it's written, or at least co-written, I'm not exactly sure, by Chef Jamie Gwen. I've actually met her before, a really nice lady. Uh, funny story is, um, back about 20 years ago or so, I was uh, filling in at a radio spot, in Los Angeles, they were having a computer show. I was working in the computer industry and um, in walks Chef Jamie Gwen. And at the end of what I was doing, she talks to me and she's like, hey, I love your voice. Can you just give me an, oh yeah? You sound like Barry White. And I'm like, oh yeah. And she's like, could I hug you? Seriously, this happened, no BS. And I thought that was too cool. Anyhow, one of the recipes in the book is chocolate chip cookies. I'm absolutely going to try that recipe real soon. And of course, I will film it and bring it to you guys. That way you guys could see how well it worked out. 
in case you had any thoughts about wanting to try it or not. So really, I think that is about it. Those are my pros. Those are my cons. My one con. With the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven Grill. Now, do I recommend it? Heck yes. Okay, first of all, if you don't already have an air fryer oven and you're looking for a large capacity oven, the Max is the way to go. Even the last one, I really loved it. It still works fine. I got a lot of good use of it, as you guys know from all the videos I put out. And this new one is no exception. It has the new grill feature. I can't even begin to describe how happy I am with it. So yeah, double thumbs up. Food experience approved, yo. That's what I'm talking about. So really, that's about it. I'm going to tow this one out of here. And with that said, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please drop me a line down below. I thoroughly enjoy hearing from you guys. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I got all kinds of good stuff coming up. And I'm going to wish you all a stellar day. Be excellent. And most of all, remember me. I'm KJ Andy O, your food experience host with the most. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.